and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and the winner is for my 10 deck ideas video. I did a poll and everybody voted on which deck they actually wanted me to build for each of the two deck ideas videos I did. This is the first one, which is, I guess, the last video, the most recent video I made. And the winner is the Arkham Dagson Assemble Cauldra Devastator sort of deck. Basically, it's, it's an assemble deck, or I guess I use the term devastator. I don't know. I like that term because I like that transformer. The idea is to assemble cauldra, which everyone is relatively familiar with, I think. There's a sword of cauldra, shield of cauldra and Helm of Cauldra, and on the Helm of Cauldra, it says pay one if you control an equipment named Helm of Cauldra, Sword of Cauldra, and Shield of Cauldra. You create a legendary 4-4 colorless avatar creature token named Cauldra and attach those equipment to it. So at the end of the day, you end up getting a 9-9 creature with First Strike, Trample, Haste, Indestructible, and whenever it deals damage to a creature, you exile that creature. Pretty fantastic. You know, if you're going to put all the effort into assembling Cauldra, I think it's probably good enough that you could close out the game. I mean, nine damage is still a lot of hits, but it's pretty darn good. However, I didn't think that having all of the Cauldra equipment in a deck, that alone was enough. So I also did the Empire series, Throne of Empires, Scepter of Empires, and Crown of Empires. And I thought all of these fit really well in a deck together because they're all non-creature artifacts. And I thought that the best commander for this was Arkham Dagson because he goes and searches your library for non-creature artifacts. I will note though, and, and someone did mention this in the comments of that video as well, Arkham Dagson for a long time, I don't know if he still is, but for a long time was a CEDH commander where you would tutor for certain pieces and combo off and whatever. I think this is a situation though, you know, just like I talked about in my 10 commanders you don't see anymore video where nobody's really seen Arkham Dagson probably for a while. Like I haven't seen one in a game in forever. So I think you'll be okay if you just show up to a random table and, and, you know, it's not like you are doing anything pretty serious or ridiculous, so I don't really think you're going to become a target. And obviously, if you're playing this in your playgroup, you'll be perfectly fine. I should also note, interestingly enough, in Modern Horizons 2, they printed Cauldra Complete, which is sort of the cheater's way to do this. It's a seven mana legendary artifact, living weapon, which means when it enters the battlefield, you're going to create a zero zero token and attach this to it. So essentially it becomes a creature and equip creature gets plus five, plus five, first strike, trample, indestructible haste. And whenever it deals damage to a creature, exile that creature. So it's going to get all those abilities. And I know people will say, well, this is way easier, isn't it? And I think definitely you could throw this in the deck for sure. It is only going to be a five, five though, because it's a zero, zero creature that you're giving plus five, plus five to. So a five, five creature is a lot less impressive than a nine, nine creature, I think. But you could definitely add it to the deck because it is a non-creature artifact and your Arkham Dagson can just go get it out of your library and put it directly into play. I also put Sculpting Steel and Mirror Maid in the deck because we can copy our Empire series artifacts. Can't copy the Cauldre ones, right? They're legendary. But any of the Empire series ones, those abilities can get pretty serious once we have all three pieces in play. Particularly Crown of Empires. You pay three, tap target creature, gain control of that creature instead if you control artifacts named Scepter of Empires and Throne of Empires. So just pay three mana, gain control of any creature permanently, right? Once your Crown of Empires leaves the battlefield, it doesn't matter. You still control that creature, right? So copying this with a Sculpting Steel I think would be fantastic. Now we can steal two creatures every turn. But of course, we got to get all this stuff in play first, and we're going to use mostly Arkham Dagson for that. Arkham Dagson has tap target artifact creatures controller sacrifices it, so we can use this on our opponents. If our opponent has a Blightsteel Colossus in play, we can make them sacrifice it, and then they get to go search their library for a non-creature artifact card and put it onto the battlefield. But of course, we want to be using this mostly on ourselves. So we need artifact creatures. We need to put a bunch of artifact creatures in play first, then we play our Arkham Dags, and then we're going to sacrifice those artifact creatures to get all the pieces that we need. Corridor Monitor and Crashing Drawbridge are both absolutely fantastic fits in this deck. It, it, these are cards that you just would think were made for Arkham Dagson. Crashing Drawbridge is going to give him haste, right? So we have our Crashing Drawbridge in play. We tap it. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. This is just a great card if you want to give haste in any color that isn't red. 
It's also an artifact creature though, right? So we can right away give our Arkham Dags in haste and then sacrifice the Crashing Drawbridge to go get something. Corridor Monitor, we're going to want to play after. So we've sacked something with our Arkham Dags in. Then Corridor Monitor comes into play and when it enters the battlefield, you untap target artifact or creature you control. So we can untap our Arkham and then sack the Corridor Monitor to go get something else out of our deck. Fantastic fit. And you know, I got Hedron Crawler, Silver Mirror. We, we want, you know, Mana Dorks. We want stuff that we're going to be doing anyway why not make it an artifact creature so that we can then sacrifice it to go get something skittering surveyor in pilgrim's eye we're going to need lands so why not put these guys in and then they'll just sit there and we'll later sacrifice them the best ones though are mirror turbine and nuisance engine these are probably going to be the ones that we want to get first if you run out of artifact creatures to sacrifice this deck basically grinds to a halt and i've already play tested it a couple times and mirror turbine is the first thing that i go get because five mana artifact and you just tap it to put a 1-1 one, one colorless mirror artifact creature token onto the battlefield. It also has tap 5 untap mirror you control, search your library for a mirror creature card and put it on the battlefield. We're never going to use that. There's nothing to go get out of our deck with it. We're just using it for that first ability, right? So we go get this because it's a non-creature artifact that we can go fetch with our Arkham Dagson, but it makes artifact creatures. Nuisance Engine, same thing. Nuisance Engine costs 2 mana, so it's not as good. Mirror Turbine just costs nothing to tap and give yourself an artifact so we can immediately go get it tap to make an artifact creature that we can then sacrifice the next turn so we always have that artifact creature available to us that we can sacrifice to get pieces we need i also put ley line of anticipation and videlkanori in the deck commander's got a tap ability and of course we're going to have thousand year elixir and of course we're going to have lightning greaves but having flash it's just great in a deck all around being able to cast all your stuff with flash but the fact that our commander we can cast it on our opponent's end step and then immediately on our turn we can use it we don't have to worry about removal. We also have other search effects, right? We don't just have to use our commander. Inventor's Fair and Koldotha Forge Master will also work. I mean, Inventor's Fair, you're just going to put in this deck anyway, right? We, Arkham Dagson can get a couple of pieces and then maybe our Inventor's Fair will go get another piece. If we rely only on Arkham Dagson to get all of our pieces of our cauldron or all of our pieces of our empires, you know, it's going to take minimum probably three turns i mean we could maybe do it in two i guess it's possible to do it in one it would be difficult but we could pull it off it would just be nice to have some of these other effects that can go get a piece for us essentially what i would do if i'm playing this deck is if i have a piece of the cauldron in my hand i'm gonna play i'm just gonna cast that piece normally and then i'll use my tutors to go get the other two pieces or if i have an empire's piece in my hand again i'll just play that piece and then i'll fetch the other two early in the game i I'd say in the first few turns, you're probably going to have at least one Empire's piece or one Cauldre piece in your hand, which will then help you to decide which route you want to start out with. I mean, you can get them both all into play. I would just start with one, right? I'd start with either I assemble Cauldre first or I go for the Empire series first, just so you can get the ball rolling. Whir of Invention and Reshape are also going to really help with this. They're just tutors for artifacts. Fabricate, of course, and Trophy Mage are also going to help. There are a lot of these mages that go fetch artifacts. I put Trophy Mage in because our Scepter of Empires costs three and our Helm of Cauldra costs three. So that's two pieces, one from each set that we can go get with Trophy Mage. Also gets our Sculpting Steel and of course a lot of other things. And then we also obviously need to be protecting our combo. Dark Steel Forge is an auto-include in this deck, of course. We can go get this with our Arkham Dagson. It also is maybe something you might want to fetch first. Again, if you have the artifact creatures and you don't need to go get your mirror turbine right away maybe dark steel forge is the first thing that you get with your arkham dagson so it makes all of your pieces indestructible and a lot harder to remove but just in case you know put something in like commit to memory the commit part is just you know it's okay four mana instant put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top we actually can use this on ourselves right if our opponent is about to exile one of our cauldra pieces for example we can put that piece into our library second from the top and then go fetch it again or wait till we draw it. But more importantly, the memory part, each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. So if a bunch of our pieces end up in our graveyard, we can just shuffle our graveyard into our library and now we can go fetch those pieces again. Rishadan Pawn Shop is another one that can do this. We can pay to and tap it. The owner of target non-token permanent, you control, shuffles it into their library. So someone's about to cast a return to dust on our Sword of Cauldra, for example. We can respond and shuffle it into 
our library. So that way it doesn't get exiled because once it gets exiled, we're kind of screwed. There's nothing we can do there. We can shuffle it into our library in response and then go get it the next turn. And then of course, Academy Ruins, Buried Ruin. We're playing an artifact deck, so this kind of stuff goes without saying. This deck, I will say, is a little bit more expensive and a little bit more high powered than probably most decks I build, which is funny since, you know, it, it's sort of a goofy theme a little bit, but when you are tutoring a lot and trying to assemble things, you know, it can drive the price up a little bit. You can even go obviously a lot higher. You're playing a mono blue artifact deck here, so you can throw in high powered counter spells. You can throw in the mox opals and the other moxes if you want to really ramp the power level up and, and sort of get your pieces together quicker. You know, for me, I don't mind. If, if I'm playing against an Arkham Dagson deck and a guy plays a first turn mox diamond, mox opal, mana crypt, I'm going to be worried. But then on the following turn, when he casts his commander and maybe goes and gets a Helm of Cauldra, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, no problem, right? But certainly it would be really, really easy to ramp up the power level for this deck, no question. But that is it. That is my Arkham Dagson Assemble Devastator, whatever you want to call it deck. The deck list is in the description below. Check it out. Have some fun with it. If you're a big fan of the channel, I make lots of fun, interesting decks on my Patreon as well. So that link is in the description. Join my Patreon. I got lots of content on there as well. If you like what I'm doing here, but that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in.